What's the matter with you? Never mind. I thought we were all about to be dancing to your tune. Do you ever wonder why people dislike you so much? It's because you are sly and oily and smug. And I'm really pleased I got the chance to tell you before I go. Well, if we're playing the truth game, then you're a manipulative little witch. And if your schemes have come to nothing, I'm delighted. Are you leaving Downton, then? What's it to you? Oh, plenty. Plenty to me. Can I help you? I doubt you would if you could. I'm sorry? Why didn't you give my instructions to Mrs Patmore about the eggs? Because I didn't feel like it. Besides, why can't Miss Sibby have an egg to her tea? I don't have to explain my decisions to you. You're a member of staff, and the orders I give are to be obeyed. And aren't you a member of staff? Not in that way. Now, I believe I'm needed upstairs. What on earth's going on here? Shouldn't you be in the gun room? Mr Jackson's got the underkeeper with him. I, I didn't want to be in their way. You're in our way here. It won't take long, Mr Carson. And I'm glad of the chance to check it's all in shape before they go. I don't need checking, thank you. And, in fact, I'm to load for his lordship, which you never can. Mr Barrow's father was a shooting man. Killing sparrows by the gasworks is hardly the same as shooting grouse at Brancaster Castle. All right. Must have been hard for you to miss your visit today. Lady Mary wants to go. We only allow one visitor at a time unless there's a special reason. It may help for them to see that the family thinks her innocent, so the sacrifice could be worth it. I'd cut my arm off if I thought it would do any good. Oh, I don't think that'd be sensible, Mr Bates. We can't have you wobbly at both ends. Come on, you've enough for a few rides and a beef sandwich, I suppose. I can buy you all a bottle of pop if you like. What an offer! Let's take him up on it before it's time to think again. Thank you, Mr Barrow, but I can buy me own pop. Don't pretend you've money to burn. I can always get money. The store cupboard's open if you need anything. No, but I do have something to ask you. Now, where did I put that box? This one. <laughs> did you see the lid? Mrs Curley's dress shop in Ripon. She's got a fancy man, I'm telling you. Mrs Patmore? Why not? She's a woman, isn't she? Only technically. Mr Bates has had his rest now and wants to get back to work. It's time to draw a line under this whole unfortunate episode. So I go out the window. I cannot hide that I find your situation revolting, but whether or not you believe me, I am not entirely unsympathetic. You have been twisted by nature into something foul, and even I can see that you did not ask for it. I think it better that you resign quietly, citing the excuse that Mr. Bates has returned. I will write a perfectly acceptable reference, and you'll find that there's nothing about it that's hard to explain. I see. What about tonight? That's nearly time to change, so you should dress him tonight and let Mr Bates take over tomorrow. I'm not foul, Mr Carson. I'm not the same as you, but I'm not foul. Yes, well, we've spoken enough on this subject. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll ring the gong. I had an uncle who went like that, finished his cocoa, closed his book and fell back dead on the pillar. I don't think Mr Permute bothered with cocoa much, or books. He had other interests. I meant he can go just like that, with no reason. Well, that's why you should treat every day as if it were your last. Well, we couldn't criticise Mr Permute where that's concerned. What do you mean? Nothing. Careful with that. May we come in? Hello, Mr. Burrow. Here you are to make you feel better. Thank you very much, Master George. We want you to get better, Barrow. Truly. And no one more than Master George. At least I've got one friend, eh? Have you been lonely? 
If I have, I've only myself to blame. I've done and said things. I don't know why. Can't stop myself. Now I'm paying the price. Strange. I could say the same. Mr. Carson's told them that you've got... Flu. I know. Beg your pardon, my lady. We're going, Barrow. And I hope things improve for you. I really do. I'd say the same if it weren't impertinent, my lady. Goodbye, Mr. Barrow. Goodbye, Master George. Why was Lady Edith ringing so late? Mr. Carson was quite worried. I couldn't tell you. I was finishing with her ladyship. When Mr. Carson knocked, his lordship went down. Hmm. I never think she has much luck. Not like you to care. You remember when Anna said I should try to understand what brought me so low? Yes. Well, I've been thinking, and I thought I might try to be someone else when I get to my new position. We do change as life goes on. Well, we could if my pastor would let us. You know what, Miss Baxter? I listen to Anna, you should listen to Mr. Mosley. Forget about Coyle and your time in prison. If you think the strong decision would be to go and see him, but you're wrong, the strong decision is to take away his power over you. Leave him behind, Miss Baxter. Get on with your life. Let that be my parting gift to you. I wonder if you're right. I am right. You're quick and efficient, and no one's ever called you stupid. There's no reason why you shouldn't get on. Thank you, Mr. Carson. I've learned a great deal from you, and I'm grateful. Good luck, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Mosley. Thank you for your help, Mr. Barrett. I'm only sorry I oh. never. You're a hard worker, Andy, and a clever fellow. I wish you well. They wanted to say goodbye, and Anna told me when you were leaving. You've just caught me, my lady. Oh, well, Master George, I hope you'll be good when I'm gone. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't go. Well, I must go, Master George. But remember, I will always be your friend wherever I am. All right? Good lad. Thank you. Right, that's it. Come along. Goodbye, Barrow, and good luck. Goodbye, Mr. Barrow.